Welcome in to K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young as we get set for another week of Wildcat football. And with a new week, it means the Monday press release of everything that kind of goes on uh, throughout the Big 12 and through K-State. You know, we get the Big 12 awards for the week. Avery Johnson, the newcomer of the week, as would have been expected, uh, ends up losing out on Player of the Week honors, but uh, it was it was easy to see why Ollie Gordon would take that because he had an awesome game against Kansas. And in addition to that, we also get the K-State game notes for their upcoming matchup. This week it is the TCU Horn Frogs. And in that, there was the little nugget of the depth chart. And amongst some other things that will get discussed at various points throughout this week, the biggest and most notable for everybody was that there was that big OR between Will Howard and Avery Johnson's name, as that means K-State doesn't have a defined starter for this game. Uh, somebody will start that game. It's just a matter of who does it end up being. And uh, Will Howard and Avery Johnson now an or instead of a one and a two, like it had been earlier in the season. So uh, that's the big question right now, D.Y. Uh, not necessarily who starts, but for you, it's Will Howard or Avery Johnson. Who are you taking? Yeah, and going back to your point of how it was been presented throughout the season of Will Howard being the in question number one and Avery Johnson number two, pretty sure be to begin the season two was Avery Johnson or Jake Rubley, yeah. right? So uh, we've completely eviscerated that that mindset as well. For me, the takeaway here is again, I, I've said this on more than one occasion this year, so it, it, I guess I'm under the impression that Chris Kleiman and his program and their approach is maybe transforming a little bit because I keep saying, you have an out. You don't necessarily have to do this, and you still do it. This is one of those situations. I mean, I, I think in past seasons, I'm not sure Kansas State has really touched the depth chart, even – yeah. I think we've had season-ending injuries and guys still just stay there because they just don't give it the same weekly attention um, that they have this year. They have been giving it more thought, more attention, and maybe that's a detail to the program where they wanted to be more transparent or or at least give the media a heads up or, or the you know not necessarily just the media, fans alike, right? So – for me, the takeaway is that they took that extra step to modify the depth chart to begin with when they didn't necessarily have to do that because I wouldn't have been looking for it otherwise. And two, that you just embracing that you have somewhat of a quarterback situation. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the bigger things to talk about here because think about when that, that news came out this afternoon and you know it's not necessarily even news that was being put out it's just every week the depth chart goes out there and I think the initial response by a lot of people fans media whoever it may be is just a little bit of shock that they would even address it in that situation where they easily could have just gone ahead and left Will Howard's name there even if he wasn't going to start on Saturday and just kind of uh, avoid it for another day and not stir anything up or because now you, you look at it, everybody walks into Veneer tomorrow, and, and when Chris Kleiman's press conference gets underway, the very first thing that will be talked about is Will Howard or Avery Johnson. When the question would have been maybe phrased a little bit differently, now it is a legitimate quarterback situation going on here uh, at K-State, at least being addressed. We knew that it was going to be there regardless based on how the game had played out in Lubbock. So, We'll have to see kind of uh, how Chris Kleiman handles it. I'm 99% sure I know how he'll do it. Uh, he'll he'll definitely toss out there. Both guys are play. We need both guys. And it's, you know, it's not always about who starts the game. Blah, blah, blah. I think Bill Snyder said that at one point. Uh, it's not about who, who starts the game at quarterback, which like in some sports, yeah, like basketball, it doesn't really matter who starts the game because 30 seconds in, you can sub a guy in and out. Uh, in football, each play is kind of meaningful, so it does kind of matter who starts. If you get in a big hole, uh, it's not always the easiest to come back from in the sport of football. So we're going to get all of that, but it's just going to have to be addressed in a significant way now, and we'll kind of see how it goes. I mean, you can look at how the guys played on Saturday, though, and I I think it became clear there 
that it has to be Avery Johnson, at least in a significant way moving forward. I, I think if you're not going to fully sit Will Howard down and he's not appearing anymore, the, the balance in which the guys are going to play, it just feels like it has to be a heavy, heavy dose of Avery Johnson and, and make this feel like he is the pseudo starting quarterback moving forward, at least for now. I mean, this is a this is a very tricky situation when you consider the dynamics here. You have one guy who is in his fourth season is a Big 12 champion quarterback and one of the main reasons for that Big 12 title. Then you have another guy on the other side that is a true freshman. And as awesome as he was against Texas Tech, and as awesome as I think and you think and a lot of other people think he's going to continue to be this season, there are going to be those moments where he just shows that he's a dude that, you know, less than a, he's less than a year removed from playing his final high school football game. And he said it after the game on Saturday night. Like, he was talking about reading coverages, but there's a lot of things that are different about college football than especially Kansas high school football. And that moment's going to come at some point. And you're just going to have to be prepared for that. So it's going to be delicate and it's going to be interesting to see how they manage it, you know, kind of moving on from this. Yeah. He's going to have some moments too, that aren't very flattering and, and it will be expected and, and then they'll have to work from it through there. It'll be interesting what the approach before I get to, to that approach, I will say again, this is a coaching staff typically, typically under Chris Kleiman that is, avoided stirring things up and this year I feel like they're just okay with addressing the elephant in the room and and in year years past I think that they've avoided the elephant in the room now they're meeting it head on and maybe they just feel like that they have a program and a roster with the maturity enough to handle it and that they don't have to hide from it necessarily but what'll be interesting I think the last time that this was the case is when they had all those injuries, right? And Chris Kleiman went through in his opening statement, nonetheless, and went through says, Will Howard is, I think he said, questionable. He says, and as you guys know, Treshawn Ward was injured. We didn't even know he was injured yeah. and, so, and said he was out. And there was a three or four others that he went across and, and, and addressed as well. So do we see more of that? I wonder, like, is he just going to come out? in his opening statement and basically address the elephant in the room so that it doesn't have to be asked. That'll be interesting. I do think that despite this revelation of a depth chart or Avery Johnson is sharing the one line with Will Howard, I think we do get a non-answer answer, much like what we did after the game. I think after the game is probably more to protect the feelings involved and because more assessment and analysis is needed, not only with Chris Kleiman in a room sitting down with Will Howard and or Avery Johnson, but he probably wanted to have a conversation with his offensive coordinator before making any sort of proclamations as, as well. I don't think Colin Klein would have been a super appreciative tip for him to go on the record with some sort of Will Howard still our guy, Avery Johnson still our guy. So Every step of the way thus far, I think Chris Kleiman has handled it well. What that ultimate conclusion will be in terms of the approach that they choose to take is to be determined. I don't think that that plan is going to be revealed on Tuesday and certainly won't be revealed on Thursday. If anyone was going to reveal it, it would be Chris Kleiman on Tuesday. I don't think – I think Colin Klein is even less likely to – attack that question with a transparent answer as well. And that's not to criticize them. Um, they're, they're probably incentivized to, to be a little coy about it. So I get it. I realize it and, and I expect it. And I'm not complaining about it one bit in terms of what I think is going to happen. I have zero conviction because I would not be shocked if they say, you know what? Avery, let's go. But there is still a decent sized part of me that says they, they treat it a little bit like the Texas Tech game where they still start Will Howard. And if and he gets a possession, maybe two, and you prove to us whether this is your game or not, if it's not, here we go, Avery. 
I think it's going to be interesting to see how how they manage it when they decide it it it, it is the game to give to Avery, um, because I I just think the way things have played out and and how the the energy and the kind of momentum that you gain for making that switch on Saturday night, I I feel like the correct move would probably be to give Avery Johnson the start and treat him like the main guy. And I still think that there is a realm where you can use Will Howard on Saturday, uh, but you have to be very selective about it, and you have to be pretty darn confident that it's going to work for for him and the team. And the the one thing that you'll have to keep in mind in all of this, if you're a fan watching how K-State is playing, is you, you probably want this right now. You probably want Avery Johnson to be the guy on Saturday against TCU. And right now you're probably saying, yeah, he, he's the guy the rest of the way. You got to keep in mind again, the, these guys that are uber talented, they will still have these moments that are going to come up. And you're going to have to come and make a decision. Now, this is Chris Kleiman and, and Colin Klein that have to make this decision. Um, fans have to make a decision on if they're happy and comfortable with it. But you're going to have to make a decision when there comes a time that Avery Johnson struggles because it is likely to happen. The track record is a lot of these guys do. Now, there are some super freaks out there that don't have these problems. And there is a, a higher chance than most that Avery Johnson is one of those super freaks and avoids it. But yeah, but even if they are a super freak, they still don't avoid some kind of struggle because we're yeah. even seeing that right now with Dante Moore at UCLA. Yeah. Great point. And so you have to decide, okay, when we make this move, we're, we can't flip back. Like you, you have to be pretty con, you know convinced of what you're doing, or if you are going to flip back, you better make sure that the flip back is a permanent one and not this just jostling back and forth because it's one thing for Will Howard to have to deal with this. He's been in the program for four years. He gets how it goes. This is this is about a, a, making a winning move. Also, Will Howard has dealt with being the starter and not the starter plenty of times. This guy is well-versed in this. Totally <laughs> different situation this time, but he, he at least it? knows how this works. This is his wheelhouse, I think. At this yeah, point. exactly. Yeah. I mean, last year was was uncomfortable for him the last five games or whatever when he was the only guy. So you have to keep in mind, like when this happens, you might just have to let Avery Johnson struggle and get out of it himself. I mean, if you go and look at, at kind of how this thing went down, I mean, this isn't an apples to apples comparison by any means. But if you think about the last time that K-State had a situation uh, to this magnitude, I mean, Josh Freeman would be the quarterback that I would compare because that was obviously an all-time talent at that position. He ends up being a first-round pick by the Bucs uh, after his junior year and everything. K-State ends up making the switch in a significant manner in a, a game they played in Waco. It was a disgusting game, just you know, terrible performance. They lost 17-3. to He came into that game. He was 11 of 33 for 196 yards and three picks. And the next week, they started him against Oklahoma State. He went out. It wasn't a great game. It wasn't a bad game. And then he had a couple of others that came after that where he played not very well against Nebraska, 23 of 47, two picks, no touchdowns. Uh, K-State lost 21 to three. The week after that, they lost to Missouri, 41 to 21. Freeman, five of 19 for two picks, 63 yards, no touchdowns. And then they went on a three-game winning streak in the middle of all of that before losing to KU at the end of the year, one of Ron Prince's biggest faults in life. But they just let Josh Freeman go out and wear it, get that experience. I don't know that that happens to Avery Johnson against TCU, but it will happen at some point. At least it could happen at some point. And when it does, you're going to have to be comfortable with making a decision of, do we make this a full-time switch, if that's the case in, in general? Because there is an element to this where Will Howard – is still more heavily involved than we assume, and it's just the the game plan worked out for Avery Johnson against Texas Tech. But it feels like this was a massive shift for K-State, and it feels like based on momentum and the way that the energy was after a game like what they played in Lubbock, this has to be a permanent move in my eyes, and it's just going to come down to can Colin Klein and Chris Kleiman manage this situation when things go really well or also when things don't go so well because – you know, again, history suggests that will happen to a very young quarterback like Avery Johnson. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I don't want to jostle back and forth between the two a ton. And obviously, if Avery's lighting up the world on fire like he did on Saturday, then you don't have to worry about it 
too much, right? The only thing that I would say is that you do whatever it takes necessary as long as you're in that Big 12 title hunt and there's only a one in the conference loss column. And now I think Jocelyn back and forth would be pretty problematic and probably detrimental to whether you want to game or not. But like if Avery's really struggling one day and, and you need something else to get over the hump, I don't think you just wear it and, and just accept the loss. I th- that's where I would probably fight back a little bit. But once those things are probably determined, if there's a two or a three in the, in the conference loss column, then I'm more along the lines of which, you are saying, because at the end of the day, I'll put it this way. I kind of agree with Chris Kleiman and what he said in his answer following the game, especially with the nature of the quarterback position in how seasons unfold. You're going to need Will Howard again for one reason or another this year. Yeah, no, that it's true. And I guess if you're in a position where you're having to think about going back and forth between guys, uh, it probably means that things aren't going the best anyway. So True. you yeah, probably right. only would have to make that decision one time. And if it yeah. doesn't work out, then that's when you say, all right, we're, we're rolling the rest of the way. And I, you're right on how to handle that. Like if they are in a situation where they are struggling, like say they're Houston, I got in trouble for saying how bad Oklahoma state was and then bad things happened to K state. So I probably shouldn't say Houston is so bad. I don't about, see that. About their four and one in the Big Twelve, and it's the second half, and they've done nothing on offense against Texas, but the game's still close. Yeah, it's, it's seventeen to three or something. Yeah, yeah, that's when you might that's when you might have to make a decision. And then at that point, you know, obviously, if Will Howard were to play fantastic there, then that's probably a situation where he has the job back, or at least he's out there a majority of the time, and you st- you use Avery Johnson more so in the way that I think we anticipated him being used on. Saturday night in Lubbock and throughout points this season. Um, And you, you see how it goes from there, but there could come a point also where, yeah, the, it it doesn't make mathematical sense to think that you're going to make it to Arlington. And at that stage uh, you think will Howard for everything that he's done for you. And you're going to feel bad about doing it, but a lot of people in this position, you go with the guy that's talented, the youngest and is going to be the future of K state football uh, Will Howard, although maybe brief, was uh, is going to end up being a part of a very, very good past of K-State football. Um, but uh, we're, we're a long ways away from getting those decisions because K-State has to take care of business against TCU in Houston the next two weeks at home. And then uh, that game in Austin seems like probably the big tipping point in how this saga ends up playing out and, and getting some finality to it. But for the time being, it is Will Howard or Avery Johnson on the K-State depth chart. And we will have to see how things go this Saturday against the Horn Frogs for the uh, freshman quarterback for the Wildcats and how he follows up his impressive performance in Fort Worth and how K-State manages handling two quarterbacks. It's it's happened a lot more in K-State history than people would probably like uh, having to use multiple quarterbacks in the same game or argue about who should start. Fortunately, uh, I think this is probably – one of the more talented conversations about who should play at quarterback. This is not Alex Delton versus sophomore Skylar Thompson, uh, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, Skylar ended up being very good. I ended up being very wrong about my love for Alex Delton. Uh, I don't think I'm wrong for loving aspects of both Will Howard and Avery Johnson for K state. And we'll see how it plays out uh, Saturday night. It'll be interesting. All right, that's probably the best way to put it. Cats and Frogs, Saturday night, Will Howard or Avery Johnson. Everybody just hanging on the edge of their seats, waiting to see who Mitch Fortner announces at quarterback. We'll have to find out. We'll see if Mitch has been practicing uh, this week, uh, either name. You know, he's got Will Howard down, but has he has he managed what it would take to say Avery Johnson's name the first snap of the game? We'll find out on Saturday against the Frogs. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Be sure to check out everything we have going on over at On3. That way, you're not just getting the the YouTube and podcast commentary. You're also getting all the inside info you need on the team, recruiting, and also uh, having fun or maybe not having fun reading and posting on the message boards, depending on what day it is and what's going on 
that at that time during the game. But that will do it for Derek and I. We are back with the KSO Show Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays during the football season. And uh, we will keep you up to date with everything going on with the Wildcats.